Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. So today's video is going to be the start of a little bit of a series on my channel and that is around baby weaning. Do you want some? You lift it up. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you want some? So LED is six months old now, so I'm starting the baby weaning process. I kind of, kind of started introducing her to little bits and bobs like not routinely about five and a half months the nhs guidelines is six months for weaning she was showing signs quite for quite a while that she was ready to start eating she was obsessed with food she was trying to snatch out my hand she, literally she cried when i took an apple away from her because she wanted it she's always had really good head control and i just felt you know i i tried to wait it out because i you know like like to wait till six months Maybe because it's a messy, messy business. Like you've got to be mentally prepared for this next stage. Like, do not be in a rush to start weaning your baby because it's it's mental. Especially if you're doing baby led weaning, it gets. So yeah, that leads me on to my approach. I am going to be predominantly doing baby led weaning, but I do do a bit of spoon feeding, a bit of purees as well. I'm going to do exactly the same I did with my firstborn daughter. She is a fantastic eater there's nothing that girl won't eat she'll go into a restaurant and she'll be like i want octopus or squid like she loves the seafood she would eat spicy curries so she yeah she literally will eat anything like it was really weird that when she was like i say a very older baby young toddler she wouldn't wouldn't touch anything breaded so any of that like beige breaded chicken nuggets anything like that she's like no nah, i don't want that rice noodles like asian dishes lots of flavor and texture and things like that she would absolutely love so i'm hoping that i can do the same kind of thing and led will end up being a good eater i mean she does like her food now i may be doing a dairy free weaning i'm i'm still in this middle battle whether she's got a dairy allergy or she's got reflux there's something going on with her basically i am seeing our pediatrician or well, isla's pediatrician for led in a couple of weeks time so oh, i will see how that goes so this weaning might be a bit of a dairy free one but we will cross that bridge when we come to it but yeah i've just been doing a bit of everything oh do you want me to lift it up um so this this video is going to be more around what i've got in terms of items and products to start weaning um my main principles with weaning are try and always eat when you're eating so it's it's they can see you eating like babies learn so well by watching what you do so with isla i always made sure that when we did breakfast we had breakfast together so she could see mummy eating we would always sit down as a family meal. Like I know sometimes the time is gonna be a bit off when you're trying to wing a routine because you've got to be careful, especially in the beginning, that you don't feed them too close to their bottle time because then they'll be too full up and they won't take their bottle and they need to take their bottle because that's where they get their nutrition from until they're one years old is their bottle. So ideally what you wanna do is like, she wakes up at seven, give her a bottle wait a little bit and then do breakfast so it's not too long after the bottle so she can have a little bit of food but you don't want to do it too close to the bottle because i've done that mistake a few times with elodie and she won't take much of her milk whereas isla she was she was a little piggy girl and she would just eat 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 and still take a guzzle of bottle down elodie's a bit more delicate she, um and yeah she gets a bit more fill up um, yeah, we're, we're practicing um, water. Um, I've put a bit of baby juice in there. I'll explain that in a minute. But yeah, so my main principle is like, I'm sitting here with my lunch and we're going to have it together. Instill that it's something you do together, something mummy does, like, and what you're doing it. And I feel like that really, really helps with weaning and them learning to eat because they're watching you. Another big tip I would say is not so much at this age, but when they get a little bit older if they ever offer you food like they're starting to eat it and they go like that then it's when they're older baby always eat it never be like oh no mummy doesn't want it even if it's something you hate like um what was it with isla she used to give me something and i can't i couldn't stand it um oh, i can't remember what it was it's something i don't eat personally because i don't like it but i had to later eat it because they want that reassurance when they're maybe a bit unsure of a texture or a flavor or something like that and they're passing it to mummy to 
try to reassure them, do it. And obviously, every time you're feeding or doing a bit of weaning, just eat it as well. Just show them, um, you know, mummy, it's okay, mummy's eating it. Because they always need that kind of reassurance and to learn by example. And that leads me on to puree. So I'm going to predominantly do baby led weanings, but as I said, I do do a bit of purees. Now, I, in, for me, and I did this with Isla, I'm not going to give her something that I would never eat in my life. Give her some sweet potato sticks, I would eat them. Give them some broccoli to eat, I would eat them. I would eat the smoothie purees they do, like the sweet ones, they taste like a, a smoothie. I would eat them and, like happily. They actually, some of them taste absolutely amazing. Like I um, sit there and eat them. But would I eat pureed broccoli? pureed spinach absolutely not so i never gave isla any of that um vegetable based puree stuff all her veg were like finger foods like we've got sweet potato today um i did i don't even believe i sorry the cat's moment i don't even believe that i gave her many of the like spag bowl pureed like meals i i remember pureeing a little bit at the beginning but predominantly i was just giving her finger foods and the purees i was given was sweet purees because i just think like who is going to eat broccoli pureed broccoli like no one is so and i don't want her to go mommy try this because i'll be like Egh. so yeah they're my like main things that i really believe help with kids not being fussy it's the same communal eating eat together so they can learn from you never you know, turn down food if they're giving it to you to try because they want that reassurance and feed your baby what you eat like at this stage like around six months they kind of need a bit softer a bit more like they're a bit more like niched into what they can actually have but the older they get the more you can give them just the meals you're having and i feel like that is just like the go-to so yeah let's go on to a few staple items i have for the whole weaning process and some products and stuff i bought so first of all i've got the mama's and papa's play chair and this comes with a little toy as well which is absolutely fantastic but i'm just going to talk about the chair so they when you start winning the baby they have to have good head control like keep their head up but not necessarily be able to sit up and they did just be able to sit up to a reasonable degree which eddie can but she's still a bit wobbly at the moment um would you like this Ooh, good girl drinking dry in your water i do have a high chair for her which is over here i'll show you in a second but she's just that little bit smaller. So these bum chairs, I think they can be used for like three, four months. So they're really padded and they don't wobble about so much in them. So they're really good for around, especially if you've got a dinky baby like this one. It just keeps them a bit more secure. I Probably by seven months, I'll move her up to her high chair. But at the moment, she just sits in this. It's got a lovely little like tray here that you can put food on. And yeah, this one was my first daughter's as well. So I've really got my use out of it and I think it's fantastic. Next up, I'll just show you this. It's, oh God, is that mommy's hair? Like postpartum hair love, eating my hair. I got this Nuke um, cup. I had this, oh, are you getting tired? I had this with my first, um, not this actual cup, I've replaced it, I've got a brand new one. But this is stainless steel and i really like the tea on this i've got a couple of the other ones the munch kid ones but she's not getting on with them at the moment but i got this one because i knew i knew it did really well for my daughter and you want to get a cup that will take a, a beating because the amount this is going to be flung on the floor um, and being stainless steel it never broke with my first one do you want your job done yeah we're getting tired now. I'm going to put her bed in a second and then I'll talk through. But yeah, this um, this cup is really good. They do do it in different colours. It's, it's 15 quid, but this, yeah, would take all the beatings being flung on the high chair, being smashed on the floor, never cracked, and um, was absolutely amazing. We, um, you can replace the teats as well, get teat replacements because when I start getting teats, sometimes I'm gnawing it and they, they cut them open. But this is really good. She's getting on again with this teat because it is 
I say almost a bit similar to like a bottle tea, whereas the other ones, like the Munchkin ones, they're a bit more technical. Um, I'm hoping to move. Don't need that. Um, but yeah, so they're like the first two. So this is my high chair, guys. So this is the Bugaboo Giraffe. I had the newborn insert on there. And also, once they get bigger, you can trade it off and they can just sit on there as a toddler. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I really, really rate it. As I said, just a little bit too big. Like, even with the straps, she just wobbles a bit too much. So I just find it easier putting it in there. But this tray comes off as well, which I think... So you can put on the table to eat, which I think is really, really good. But uh, yeah, um, everything is so messy. Like, honestly, this is why I try and push it to like the six month mark to um, start weaning because the mess is horrific. But yeah, let me show you some products I've got. So let me show you all the food based products first that I've got for LED. I bought these Egyptian jabs leading up to the weaning mark, if there's offers on, if there's a baby and toddler event, because it does become quite pricey buying baby food because the markup you know on baby stuff is always horrific and i do like to try and do as many home family meals and just give her what we're giving like if we have a roast dinner she can have a broccolis or whatever but it's also handy having pouches and little bits and bobs for going out so i i bought a few bits but i've done this you know in when i've seen offers on and stuff like that so first of all i absolutely love these and these are the ella's kitchen melty puffs as they say, they literally they look like Watsits. Uh, there's a couple of different flavours and they do literally just melt and become like a gooey mess in their mouth. These are really good, I find, for that initial hand-mouth coordination. Both girls got on with these straight from the start, was happy putting them in the mouth and, you know, melting them away. And I just find them really handy to throw in a change bag, take out with you, and you can, if you're out for a meal, and they're not really eating, but you want to just give them so much to join in. As I said, like that communal eating, then a few little milk puffs are good. Also along the same lines are the Kidalicious wafers. Now these are banana ones. Again, the same kind of principle there. They just melt and become a gooey mess. I mean, they're oh, sticky, horrible stuff. Like they get everywhere, but they're really good for that hand mouth coordination in the beginning. I then got some Heinz baby juice now this says a year plus i swear it was like seven months when i bought it with isla but what i do i don't give her the juice just like that i put a little bit in a cup and then top it up with water and then as i go along i change the ratios just i did it with isla it's just to get her used to drinking water give her a little bit of something sweet in there and then get to the point where she is basically water and then i can carry on with water so i don't use this throughout it's just literally to get that initiate that water drinking and as i said that's one year plus the the i think pretty much the the age is like the six months plus the seven months plus is a bit guided because puree based stuff it seven months plus it's just a bit more lumpy Whereas I'm doing baby leg weaning as well, so she's used to lumpy stuff. So giving her something, a puree that's seven, eight months plus will be fine for someone, you know, that's used to actually eating chunks. So it depends how you're doing it, whether you should stick to A ranges or not. I kind of, I wouldn't give her something 12 months plus right now, but as, she, as we go and she gets more confident with eating, then I don't find it too bad. So next up is baby porridge now i've never done just plain old baby rice i don't believe it's got any nutritional value whatsoever i did get a few porridges now this one is a banana but this has got milk in it because i was seeing if she had any kind of reaction to a milk-based product um, and this one is one that doesn't have milk in it i must say that this one definitely tastes better than this one like this is creamier because obviously i've tried them and yeah this one tastes a bit like awful and um, especially when i was mixing it with her hypoallergenic formula but yeah i just got a bit baby porridge just to see if she likes that sticky texture i must say she's not she's not keen on any kind of porridge but i've got a few of them as well just to try and give her some breakfast if i don't give her this and i normally give her a little bit of banana or a bit of puree at breakfast 
And I did show you a couple of things I haven't opened yet, but I'm going to. So I've got the little rusks. Again, they've probably got milk in them, so I don't know if I'm going to be using them. Yeah, milk. Um, you can mash them with milk or give them as finger food when they're a bit older. I bought some of this Tilda rice now. Is it any different from adult rice? It's probably got less salt because salt's something you've got to look out for. But yeah, I had a few of these with Isla, so when she got a bit older, she just spooned the rice in her mouth and really, really liked it. And then I saw this strawberry and banana rice pudding, and I thought that I might give her a go on that, dependent, because it's probably got... No, this hasn't got any milk in it. How amazing is that? So yeah, this hasn't got milk in it, so I can give her some of that. She'll probably really like that. I... These Tilda ones never have an age on them so they're not like oh from three months plus four months plus but i find those really good and um, the rice is in the rice pudding. so in terms of my purees i've got quite a selection here and as i said i don't tend to buy like just singly pureed broccoli i've got some mango and passion fruit i've got the piccolo and she actually loves this one and actually it tastes banging but it's pear, banana, coconut milk, and it's got a bit of baby rice in there, so a pinch of cinnamon, so that shouldn't be too bad, but um, yeah, I've got a brekkie strawberry and banana one, these piccolos as well, I did buy a couple of um, the ones that are, they've got fruit and they've got a bit of veg in there, so squash, carrot, apple and prunes, and apple, carrot and parsnips, I got a couple of these because I actually did like these um, and they don't taste too bad. So I've got a couple of them, but I haven't tried them yet. Um, apple, and, apple and mango, mango and passion fruit. She absolutely loves the piccolo ones. We never use them with, with Isla, but Elodie really, really likes them. And then you must always make sure you've got some Pure, prune puree because they will get constipated and prunes is really good to help their bowels go so always make sure you've stocked up in some some prune puree to help them with their digestion making sure they don't get too blocked up when you start weaning now on to a bit more of the weaning products i have so i mentioned that i've got the cup and i've got that little bum chair and the high chair so in terms of doing baby leg weaning and doing finger foods, get yourself a crinkle cutter. It's really good just to cut up bananas, bits of sweet potato, potato, any, any stick food with a crinkled edge because it just makes it easier for them to hold on to. So yeah, get yourself a crinkle cutter. Again, with all the vegetables, it's really good just to steam them because it makes them really, really soft rather than boiling or anything like that. I've got this steamer box. Literally put a bit of water in the bottom. So yeah, put a bit of water in there. Then put that on, put your veg on top, put your lid on, whack it in the microwave for about four minutes and then it's all really, really soft. And it's really quick for you to do. With Isla, I didn't have one of those, but um, well, well, we live with my parents at the time and they had this like stack of steamer on the pots. So, we use that steaming your veg is probably the best approach because it does make it really soft so if you haven't got a microwave then try and get like a steamer pot for your hob or anything like that but i highly recommend steaming your veg and then this is a total total game changer from nubby now they have pulled some winners out this time around like i never had this this is a squeeze easy and i had the nubby replicable but basically this is a puree self-feeder so you can do purees if you're someone that's you know first time mum that's quite nervous about doing baby led weaning because you're worried about choking and stuff like that so you feel like purees you feel more confident with purees but you also want your baby to learn to self-feed rather than spoon feed then this is an absolute game changer so what you do is in this silicone bit you just get some puree Oh, I can't even do the lid. And you squeeze it all in. Get as much in as possible. Put the lid on. Make sure that clicks. And then you squeeze it and it starts coming out. I don't know if you can see it there. 
so the baby can hold it. They can hold the pure. They can hold the squeezer in the hand. Put it in a mouth. Then I can squeeze and eat the purees. So I thought that was an ingenious idea where you can actually give purees to your baby, but you can encourage self feeding at the same time. So I think this is absolute winner when it comes to like, doing a mix of purees and baby led weaning. Now, if you're planning to do spoon feeding or a bit of mix of both, I'd recommend getting smaller size spoons. A lot of sets out there will have this size spoon. Whereas you're going to want one about that size. Can you see the size difference there? You can't get that one in a six month old mouth as good as you can this one. Like you can get the tip in. So I'd recommend getting a lot smaller ones. I got these from Sainsbury's when I had, when I was weaning Isla, I had silicone ones or they did silicone ones in there, but now they're doing plastic. But yeah, I'd recommend getting a pack of smaller ones just because it's easier to put it in their mouth because that is far too big for their little mouths so in terms of bibs i highly recommend getting these body bibs they cover their arms the whole body they've got a catcher for the food down there rather than your typical silicone brown bibs i have got a few of them but they are better for older babies and toddlers whereas when you're starting especially if your baby led weaning you need to cover everything so i highly recommend these there's Loads of different brands. I'll link some down below. There's one some Bibadu. They're absolutely amazing because you can hook them around the high chair seat. So they just catch everything. So there's less cleaning. But definitely get one that's that cover a good majority of their body. So I'm not using these at the moment. But I will do when we get a bit down the line. When she's got better coordination with the hand and mouth. But these are feeder feeder spoons and forks i never really used them to be fair but the spoon is really good just getting the practice with spooning it and put it in their mouth with a utensil they could just grab on there yeah it's really easy for them to like scoop a little bit on absolutely love these i used them with isla she got on really well with them so she she learned to feed herself with spoons and cutlery rather than always self-reliant on hands so i think these are a winner but as i said i'm not using them just yet because we're not there so in terms of plates and bowls at this stage and as she's predominantly doing finger foods i don't tend to really put much in a bowl i just put it on her plate she can um, on her tray and she can grab them and feed herself when we get to the stage where maybe i am giving her rice i am giving her mashed potato and things like that i will be putting it in bowls now i absolutely love bamboo bowls but i feel they they're better for older babies they're better for toddlers like say my three-year-old if i wanted to do like separate out all her food i feel like it's just better than a younger baby so you don't feel like you need to go out run out and get wooden plates for your six month old <coughs> sorry guys i keep coughing in this video i've got a really tingle in my throat silicon bowls and plates are the way forward you want always want to get bowls and plates with edges and oh, they're just so easy to just throw in the dishwasher or just wash up wearing the wooden ones are a bit harder so i highly recommend just getting silicone ones for this age and then if you're looking to get like wooden ones just get them when they're a little bit older i just don't feel i don't feel the need and i did buy them at six months old for isla but i got to the point where actually i just preferred the silicone ones because they're easy you can throw things in the microwave with those easier to wash up as I said, if you've got a dishwasher, then you can put them in the dishwasher. But yeah, just get yourself some silicone ones. So yeah, that is pretty much it in terms of what I've got to start the weaning process with LED. I will be doing quite a few videos. I'll be doing how I introduced it and how I introduced weaning as part of her routine. I'll be doing her first finger foods. I will be doing introducing allergens when we get to that point of her being able to eat more stuff i'll be doing family meals and what we can have as a family because obviously she's got to watch the salt content so yeah do let me know if there's anything else you would like to see or interested in knowing about when it comes to weaning whether it be spoon feeding and baby led weaning because i'm doing a bit of both and i'll see you guys in another video goodbye